Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, the introduction and thank you for the invitation as well. Uh, my name is Julien Ferry. As you mentioned, I am a PhD student at the La CNRS in Toulouse, France. Today, I'm first going to briefly overview my different uh, research topics. And then, in the second part of my presentation, I will present one of my last works on the use of integer linear programming methods to learn optimal fair rule lists. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we, we can uh, press if needed. Oh, ah, no, it's okay. Okay. Uh, so I work at the Laboratory for Analysis and Architecture of Systems in Toulouse, French. This laboratory is part of the French National Center for Scientific Research, and it covers many different uh, research topics such as robotics, chemistry, physics, and other ones, and obviously computer science. Among the different uh, computer science teams, uh, I belong to the ROC team, where ROC stands for Operations Research, Combinatorial Optimization, and Constraints. Uh, so basically, people in this team work on different aspects of uh, algorithmic and optimization, and on their applications to uh, things like scheduling, industrial applications, and also machinery. So as you mentioned as well, I uh, have a master's degree in computer networks engineering. I graduated from the National Institutes of Applied Sciences in Toulouse, uh, France in 2020. And since that time, I'm a PhD student. My PhD is supervised by Marie-José Huguet and Mohamed Siala in Toulouse and by Sébastien Gant, uh, who is professor at the University of Quebec at Montreal. And I am also advised by Ulrich Aivoji, who is associate professor at uh, the Ecole de Technologie Supérieure in Montreal. I'm currently visiting Sebastian and Ulrich, why, which is why I'm here today. Uh, my PhD topic is addressing interpretability, fairness, and privacy in machine learning through combinatorial optimization methods. So one way to represent it graphically would be to use this graph, where you can see uh, these three very active fields of trustworthy machine learning that are interpretability, fairness, and privacy. And uh, the objective of my PhD is to study their interactions, which can be either uh, synergies or tensions, using tools from uh, combinatorial optimization and operations research. So in the next few slides, I will uh, overview my different research topics, and I will position them on this graph. So my very first work, say that I actually began as a research intern, consisted in integrating statistical fairness constraints within a supervised learning algorithm of the literature, producing inherently interpretable models that are holist models. So in this work, uh, we considered a state-of-the-art uh, supervised learning algorithm producing interpretable models, and we modified it to ensure that uh, the produced interpretable models also satisfy some statistical fairness constraints. The algorithm uh, we modified is called, was called Corels, and so our modified version of the algorithm is called Far Corels. The source code is available online, and uh, the algorithm was presented in an archive paper. Last year, we presented it uh, as a demo paper at the CIKM conference. So in this paper, we present the algorithm, and we show how it can be used to generate sets of trade-offs between accuracy and fairness, which is what is very interesting here, is that uh, by varying the fairness constraints, you're able to generate models with different trade-offs between accuracy and fairness. And because the models are uh, interpretable, you can just give the entire set of models to a decision maker. And then based on the model's performances in terms of accuracy and fairness, but also based on, based on the model itself, because it's interpretable, a, a decision maker can just pick uh, the best model for him or for her. In a kind of follow-up work, uh, we improved the Farcorals algorithm, so it gives Farcorals U2, which is also available online. Uh, the Farcorals algorithm that I presented before was a kind of incremental modification of the Corals algorithm. So Corals is a branch and bound algorithm. And in our first version of the algorithm, we modified the current best solution update procedure, basically, to ensure that the final solution satisfies some fairness constraints. But because we are uh, enforcing statistical fairness constraints, we modify the set of acceptable solutions. And so there are more efficient ways to explore this search space. 
And this is what we do uh, in this work. We propose to use integer linear programming models to consider fairness and accuracy jointly and better prune and explore uh, the search space. So this is actually the work I'm going to present uh, in the second part of my talk. So I'm not going too much into the details now. And this work was presented in the CPAIOR conference uh, two weeks ago, actually. Another important work, uh, so as you see, this is not in an edge. So this was not planned as part of my PhD. But when I was working on FairCorels and uh, its improved version, I noticed that very often you learn a model which is fair in the sense that it satisfies some fairness constraints on its training set. But once you apply this model on unseen data, the fairness constraint is not satisfied anymore, which is obviously a problem. More generally, in the literature, the fairness constraints or freaking phenomenon has been observed, and different methods have been proposed to address it. Uh, the problem is that most of these methods have uh, limits in terms of scalability, applicability. Uh, for example, they may induce a huge computational overhead, or they may not be applicable for any type of machine learning model or any machine learning algorithm. So we proposed uh, a new method. Most of the methods in the literature are inspired by distributionally robust optimization. So in classical optimization, you want to minimize some objective function for a given distribution. In distributionally robust optimization, you want to minimize a worst case uh, objective, a worst case. You want to optimize your objective function for a worst case distribution in some neighborhood around the original distribution. Uh, in our work, we also we are also inspired by distributionally robust optimization, but the distance we use to define the neighborhood is the Jacquard distance, which is not a distance between distributions, but uh, it's a distance between sample sets. So our method is called sample robust optimization instead of distributionally robust. And in a nutshell, our idea is that we want to satisfy the fairness constraints on the training test itself, but also on uh, all sample sets contained in some neighborhood defined using the Joker distance. So we propose a framework which can be used to quantify fairness robustness for any black box model, only considering the model's predictions. We show that this framework can also be used at training time to learn sample robust fair models. We show that uh, this notion also improves fairness generalization in practice. And we propose uh, a heuristic method which can easily be integrated into many state-of-the-art uh, fair learning algorithms. We compare it to uh, other methods that were proposed to improve fairness generalization, and we show that it's competitive. The heuristic method was first presented in a national conference uh, in 2021, and the entire framework is presented in a journal paper in the Machine Learning Journal. And actually, the, the article was published yesterday in the North Journal website. OK, more recent work now. Uh, so in the literature, in recent years, um, many works try to study the interaction between fairness and privacy through the lens of the technical conflict between differential privacy and statistical fairness. So differential privacy is the standard uh, method for private learning. Statistical fairness metrics are widely used for fair learning. And it turns out that these two things are uh, theoretically incompatible. And if you apply them in a heuristic manner together, they still conflict. So many works have been proposed in, in recent years, and they address this hedge through this lens. Uh, in our work, we take a different approach. Our intuition is that usually uh, when you want to learn a fair model, you define fairness with respect to some sensitive attributes, which can be, for example, gender, age, or race. This sensitive attribute is usually not used for inference by the model you're learning, because this is prohibited by law, this is disparate treatment. However, so this means that at test time, when, when, when you use this model to, take, to make a decision, you don't need to provide it the sensitive attribute. However, because you want to ensure that the model is fair with respect to this sensitive attribute, you have to provide the training set sensitive attributes. And, th and so the final model, the model which is trained, will depend on these sensitive attributes. And in this work, we show that this can be leveraged. So basically, an adversary can leverage a fair model 
to improve its reconstruction of the training set sensitive attributes. So there's a tension between, I want to be fair with respect to sensitive attribute A, and I want to protect privacy of this sensitive attribute in this training set. This is what we show in this work, and it's currently under review for uh, an international conference. Finally, the last uh, edge of the graph. Uh, here, we try to study the conflict between interpretability and privacy. So intuitively, there is a conflict, because, or at least a tension, because the objective of explainability or interpretability is to provide information to make things uh, more understandable. And on the other side, the objective of privacy is to protect uh, some information. In this work, uh, our objective is to leverage the information contained in the structure of an interpretable model to reconstruct a probabilistic version of the training set. So we can theoretically measure, quantify the amount of information that an interpretable model encodes about its training set. We can do so for different types of interpretable models, different model representations. And we can also do this uh, empirically. And this is uh, current work. Okay, so this ends the first part of my talk. Maybe if you have questions surrounding the first part, we can we can ask them now. Okay. <laughs> and so in the second part of my talk, I'm going to present uh, the second work that I mentioned earlier, which consisted in using integer linear programming techniques to learn optimal fair rule lists. So first, I will uh, introduce the necessary background. Then I will uh, present our contribution, which consists in using integer linear programming methods to prune the search space of an interpretable fair learning progression. Uh, I will then assess uh, empirically the effectiveness of our approach. And finally, I will. So in this first section, I will introduce the notations that will be used uh, for this presentation. Then I will show how we can quantify unfairness in machine learning. I will introduce the type of interpretable models that uh, will be used for this work, that are rules models. And I will present the baseline algorithm that will be used to learn fair rule lists. So we are interested in uh, the binary classification task, where our objective is to predict a binary label given a set of attributes. So formally, we are given a data set. And our objective is to build a classifier which maps uh, the space of attributes to the space of labels. As you can see, the classifier defines a classification function. The data set is partitioned into a set of positively labeled examples and a set of negatively labeled examples because we perform binary classification. Similarly, we consider that as a training set is partitioned into a protected group, P, and an unprotected group, U, based on the value of some sensitive attributes. So for example, protected group P can be the set of females, protected group U can be the set of males. And as you can guess, these protected groups will be used later to define fairness. Finally, we will use this notation uh, to denote the number of true positive examples for, for data sets E, uh, protected group H, and given the predictions of classifier C. We use a, a similar notation to denote the number of false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. There are different ways of quantifying unfairness in machine learning. And for this work, we are interested in group fairness notions, also called statistical fairness notions or metrics. Their main principle is to ensure that some statistical measure, which is a function of the confusion matrix of a classifier, does not differ by more than a given threshold between different protected groups. The intuition is that, as I mentioned, the protected groups only differ by the value of some sensitive attributes. And so there's no legitimate reason for the classifier to behave differently on these groups, which is why we're trying to match some statistical measure between them. Depending on the particular statistical measures that you try to equalize between the protected groups, you can define different fairness metrics. Uh, so in this table, we summarized four statistical fairness metrics that are widely used in the literature. In this work, we used all of them. Uh, but for this presentation, I will focus on the first one. So this is called the equal opportunity metric. And it tries to equalize the true positive rates between the protected group and the unprotected group. And formally, we want to ensure that the difference between them 
is no greater than epsilon, where epsilon is called the unfairness tolerance. So the smaller and epsilon, the more fair the model is. Uh, and if epsilon equals zero, we can say that the model is perfectly fair for this metric. Okay, so uh, for this work, we're interested in rule list models. Rule lists, uh, so here you have an example of rule lists. Rule lists are uh, considered as interpretable by designed models, because as you can see, you can understand the logic just by reading them. Uh, rule lists are classifiers formed by an ordered list of ifs and rules with uh, antecedents in the if clauses and consequence or predictions in the then clauses. The set of ordered rules is called a prefix. So for example, here the prefix is formed by these two rules. And after the prefix, there is a default decision. So to classify an example, even a rule list is rather straightforward. You have to apply the rules of the prefix sequentially. If a rule matches, you return its associated prediction. If none of the prefix rules match, after the end of the evaluation, you return the default prediction. Different methods have been proposed in the literature to learn rule list models. Among them, Corel's uh, is a branch and bound algorithm that was proposed to learn optimal sparse rule list, minimizing this objective function, which is the weighted sum of the classification error and the rule list length. So here, lambda is an hyperparameter controlling the trade-off between sparsity and accuracy. In uh, a previous work, we proposed fair corels as a B-objective extension of corels, where uh, we also learn uh, optimal rule lists minimizing this objective function, the same uh, as in corels. But now we also want to ensure that uh, the final rule list satisfies some fairness constraints. And here, unfairness is measured using any of the statistical fairness metrics that I presented uh, in my second slide. Uh, so to understand the algorithm, Fercorels represents the search space of rule lists using a prefix tree. So here you have an example prefix tree for a data set with four attributes. Each attribute corresponds to a color in the tree. Just like Corels, Fercorels uses different bounds and uh, different exploration strategies, exploration heuristics, to explore this search space efficiently. So to understand the structure of the search space, here you have an example of rule lists. And uh, this rule list corresponds to this node in the tree. Because the antecedent of the first rule is gender female, it corresponds to this node. The antecedent of the second one is age less or equal to 25. So if you add a prediction to each of these nodes, you get a prefix. And if you add uh, a default decision, you get a rule list. So in this prefix tree, each node corresponds to each node. If you take the path from the root to this node, it defines a prefix. And if you add uh, a default prediction, it defines a default list. The limitations of our first version of Fercorels, of Fercorels, as I mentioned earlier, is that it was mainly an incremental extension of Corels, where the search uh, is performed in almost the same way. And the only difference is that before updating the current best solution, we checked whether the candidate solution satisfies some fairness constraints. And if it doesn't, we don't perform the update operation. However, the fact that we enforce fairness constraints modifies the set of acceptable solutions. And in these conditions, the exploration of the prefix tree is considerably more difficult. More generally, uh, the problem of learning optimal interpretable models satisfying some constraints, such as fairness constraints uh, in our work, has been identified as one of the main technical challenges towards the development of interpretable machine learning. So, the solution I'm going to propose can be seen as a particular technical solution for a particular instantiation of this more general challenge. Okay, so now I'm going to present our contribution uh, to improve the exploration of this prefix tree using integer linear programming models. Uh, first, I will give the intuition of our approach, then I will present the integer linear programming model that we will use. And uh, finally, I will explain how we can use it to improve the exploration of the search space. So here you have an example prefix, delta one. This is simply, uh, as I mentioned earlier, an ordered set of rules. So this is a prefix with two rules. <coughs> here you have an example rule list, which is what we call an extension of uh, prefix delta one. So this simply means that 
We took prefix delta one, we added some rules to form a longer prefix and a default decision to form a full list. And here you have an example of data set with two examples. What we can see is that each example of the data set can either be determined by a prefix delta one. So it is determined if one of the rules of delta one captures it or not. For example, example E1 is classified by the first rule of uh, prefix delta one because it has the attribute gender main and it will be predicted high by delta one because it's reliable is high. E1 is what we call a true positive example. On the other side, we see that example E2 is not captured by the first rule of delta one, not uh, nor by the second one. And so example E2 is not determined by prefix delta one. However, we are sure that any example classified determined by prefix delta one, such as E1, will also be determined by any extension of delta one and will have the same classification. So if you look at D1, obviously E1 is classified by the first rule as it was the case here, and it is still a true positive example. So here we know that any extension of delta one will have at least one true positive example, which is E1. Whatever you add after, you will always have at least one true positive, which is E1. Uh, by symmetry, you can say that you will have at most the number of examples in the data set minus one false negatives. And so here is the idea of a method. At each node of Fercorel's prefix tree, we check whether it is possible, given the predictions that are imposed by the prefix, to simultaneously satisfy the fairness constraint and improve the current best objective function. If this is not possible, then we know that we don't have to explore the subtree associated to this perfect because we won't find a better solution. So we can just prune the entire subtree associated to this perfect. So here is uh, the integral in our programming model we can use to do so. Uh, it simply needs four integer variables. We need two integer variables to, to model the confusion matrix uh, of the classifier on protected group P, and two others to define the confusion matrix of the classifier on protected group P. The bounds of the domains, sorry, of these uh, integer variables are uh, defined to be consistent with uh, the prefix predictions. And then we simply need to define uh, the desired constraints. So this is the constraint on the number of well-classified examples. And this is the fairness constraint. So the fairness constraint is exactly the constraint that I showed in table one. Uh, the constraint of on, on well-classified examples states that we want to classify at least L examples and at most U examples correctly. So how can we uh, determine L? We can compute a tight value of L uh, to ensure that it's the minimum number of examples that you must classify correctly to improve over the current best solution. And we can compute a tight value of U, which corresponds to the actual maximum number of examples that you can correctly classify, given the errors made by prefix delta and the inconsistencies that may be contained in the training data set together. Yeah, XTP is, is the variable for the uh, which one? The, the two variables, uh, X, E, and X, F. Yes. They are, can you say again, please? Sorry? What, what they represent here? Yes, yeah, so, so this this represents the number of true positive examples okay. All right. yeah. uh, on the classifier uh, so that we, we want to build for a protected group U, and we have the same thing for protected group P, and the other one represents the number of false positives. So the, the confusion matrix of a classifier is the true positive, false positive, True negative, false negative examples. Yeah. And because we perform binary classification, you only need two of them. To, and to define the other ones, you can simply perform a different. So if there is a solution to this uh, model, we know that there exists a uh, classification function, which is consistent with the predictions of uh, prefix delta and satisfies both uh, the fairness constraints and improves the objective function. On the others, but we don't know if there exists a rule list that encodes this classification function, but we know that they, there exists a classification function. On the other side, if there is no solution to this model, we know that there doesn't exist any uh, classification function, which is consistent with prefix delta's predictions and uh, satisfies both constraints. So there's no classification function, there's no rule list. And in this case, 
we are sure that prefix delta cannot be used to form uh, a better solution than the current test one. So we can prune the entire subtree associated to prefix uh, delta. Uh, again, this is a model for the equal opportunity metric, but if you want to consider another fairness metric, you just have to plug in a different fairness constraints, which is easy because this is simply a declarative programming approach. So I just described the pruning version of our approach, where uh, at each node of the prefix tree, you check whether there is a solution to uh, the model I just showed. If there's no solution, we can prune the entire subtree associated to this model. And if there is a solution, we just keep exploring. Another possibility is to use the integer linear programming model to guide the exploration of uh, the search tree, the prefix tree. So to do this, we add an objective function to the ILP model. And we try to maximize the number of well classified examples. With this new version, uh, if there is no solution, again, we can perform the pruning just like in the pruning version. But if there is a solution, we get an additional information, which is how far we can improve the objective functions. We get a lower bound on the objective function, and we can use this to order the priority queue and guide exploration towards uh, the prefixes for which fairness and accuracy conflict the less. So do you have some, sorry, not any technical guarantee, you know, I guess, or is it just because you say you give a lower bound, right? Uh, for the pruning version or for the guiding yeah, version? version. Uh, for the guiding version, we cannot be sure that it will actually speed up the search, okay. but we do not lose the, the optimality guarantee. Okay. What's it, what is interesting also here is that because we order the priority queue using these lower bounds, uh, when we arrive at a point where the best solution, the best candidate in the, the in the priority queue is worse than uh, what we already have. We can stop exploration. We don't have to keep exploring what's remaining in the priority queue. But we cannot guarantee that this will actually speed up uh, the exploration. We try to go into the right direction, but maybe it will fail. And as you will see in these experiments, it doesn't always work. Yes, this is just an exploration here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, empirically assess the effectiveness of the proposed uh, method. So we implemented and solved the ILP models in C++ using the CPEX solver. Uh, and in our experiments, we compared uh, four different uh, methods. The original breast first search uh, corresponds to the original Schaff-Corrales algorithm. This is a baseline algorithm that we're trying to improve with a breast first search uh, exploration. Then uh, here you have two pruning variants of our method. So they both use a breast first search priority queue ordering. The difference between these two pruning approaches is that uh, in the eager approach, the uh, ILP models are solved before they start inserting a node into the priority queue. So in the eager approach, you call uh, the solver as soon as possible because you want to limit the growth of the exploration frontier or the priority queue. So, and on the other side, in the lazy approach, you only call the solver one extracting a node from the priority queue. So in this one, you wait as much as possible before calling the solver and trying to print the search space because you want to save time at the beginning of the exploration. Okay, and the first uh, version that we'll, we'll compare is the guiding approach that I described. So this is a best first search where the priority queue is uh, ordered by the objective of the integer and upper models. And it, it inherently performs an integer pruning. Uh, just to mention here, I use BFS because we tried all the different uh, search heuristics that were proposed in the Fairfax algorithm. And it turns out that uh, Brad's first search here was the best one. This is because most of the original Farquhar's heuristics just go in the wrong direction. And friendly, the best way to do this is not go into directions, but explore everywhere. <laughs> so we compared these four different uh, integrations. Again, the baseline algorithm, two pruning variants, and the guiding variants on two data sets uh, that are widely used in the fairness literature. On the four fairness metrics of table one, here, uh, I only report results for the equal opportunity metric. 
but results for the other metrics show the same trends. We set a maximum CPU uh, memory use, a maximum CPU time, and uh, we perform each experiment 100 times with different random seeds and report uh, the average results. So the first uh, interesting dimension to evaluate is uh, certifying optimality. So in here you have the results for uh, the compass data set and the German credit data sets, the data sets that we use. Uh, and on the X axis, you have uh, the fairness value. So this is one minus the even fairness value. So here one stands for perfect fairness. And uh, when you go on the left, you relax the fairness constraint. On the Y axis, you have the proportion of instances that are solved to optimality. This means that we reached the optimal solution and we proved its uh, optimality. What we see is that. So I forgot, you, you see anything about time limit? Uh, the time limit is 20 minutes for Compass and 40 minutes for German credit. Uh, this, there is a difference between, between them because the size of the prefix tree is uh, highly related to the number of attributes in the data set. And for Compass, uh, in our version, we only had 18. Uh, and for German credit, we had more. So the, the expiration for German credit was longer. So what we see here is that when the fairness constraint is not active, which is the case uh, on the left part of the graphs, all methods are able to prove, uh, to reach and to prove optimality. Because in, in this region, fair corels just behaves like the original corels. And when there's no fairness constraint, the original corels algorithm has effective bounds. However, when we uh, strengthen, tighten the fairness constraint, we see that the original Farcorel's algorithm, which is in blue here, is not able to prove, uh, to reach and prove optimality anymore. For all our pruning approaches, we see that, or for most of them, we see that we are still able to reach and prove optimality. So in this region, uh, the effectiveness comes from the ILP pruning. Well, it goes, seems to go up. The uh, orange one? No, on the right. Which one? There, it looks to be a bit higher than 100 percent. Uh, I no, I think it's the contrary. Here it's 100 percent, and here is the. Oh, makes sense. Okay, uh, makes sense. So for this experiment, yes. it turns out that with one particular split of the data set, you have something which is very difficult to solve. Uh, yeah, I tried to do this experiment uh, manually, and even the original corals was not able to prove optimality. Not sure why, but still I. So basically, you you saw ninety nine instances, but yeah. not one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, for so there 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 yeah, exactly. So for each value of the fairness constraint, we saw one hundred. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> uh, so now, if we focus on this zone where uh, our fairness based pruning is active, we can build cactus plots. Uh, so in this plot, you have the CPU time in logarithmic scale as a function of the proportion of instances of to optimality. Uh, intuitively, the objective is to reach uh, this dotted line as soon as possible. So when you reach this line, it means that you've solved all instances to optimality. Again, we observe that the original Fercorels uh, is never able to prove and reach optimality here, and uh, only for a few instances here, and still it requires a lot of time. Uh, on the contrary, all our uh, methods are able to prove optimality here and most of them here. What's interesting in these figures is if we compare our different approaches uh, one with the other, what we see is that uh, the lazy pruning variant is not interesting if you want to perform the search overhaul. This is what we expected because uh, what the lazy approach does, it's, it waits as much as possible before performing the pruning. But at the end of the day, it still has to perform it. And because it waited, it lost some time at some point. Uh, what's interesting, however, is if we compare the eager pruning, so this is a green curve, and the ILP guiding approach in red. So these two approaches perform the exact same pruning. The only difference is that uh, for the red curve, we guide the search uh, using the ILP objective function. And for the green one, we just perform a breast search. And we see that in this experiment, the fact that we guide the exploration is highly beneficial. We speed up convergence a lot. Uh, but this is not the case here. 
And here, actually, the, the, the guiding is counter beneficial. So as, you, as you mentioned, we cannot be sure that uh, the ILP based uh, search heuristic will actually speed up the search. It's just a way to try to go in the right direction, but may not work in some expressions. So basically, it helps the red search to, to get the right direction. Uh, so it, for the green one, we just perform a breast for search. Okay. We explore Very the tree node the level after level. And for the red one, we go in the directions based on the value of the ILP. Okay. And, and so we have a guess why you have this difference. Is it a structural difference in the data set? Uh, yes, this is definitely related to the data set. Um, not sure why. I mean, here it just turns out that if you, so if for the red curve, we say that a prefix is promising if uh, we can still reach high objective and good objective function values while satisfying the fairness constraint. So this means that inherently the prefix does not, in the prefix or the prefix predictions, do not conflict uh, accuracy and fairness too much. But depending on what will come after, it may not be a good way to estimate uh, what is a promising solution. It can in some directions and it may not in some other. So yeah, definitely trying, we see, we see that it can work very well. So trying to maybe modify it or formulate it differently is an interesting future work. Another interesting dimension is uh, the reduction of the priority queue size and so reduction of the algorithm's memory footprint. So as uh, in the first graph that I showed, here you have the fairness value, which is the opposite, uh, which is uh, one minus the unfairness value. So here you have the perfectly fair solution. And when you go on the left, you relax the fairness constraint. And here you have the relative, uh, the relative cache size. What you see in both uh, curves, and especially in this one, is that when the fairness constraint uh, is uh, tightened, when the fairness constraint becomes stronger, the cache size uh, that is needed is uh, decreases. This is because uh, when the fairness constraint is stronger, our pruning is also stronger, and so it uh, helps a lot to reduce the memory footprint. So basically, correct me if I'm wrong. You're it doesn't affect uh, the, the original one, the, 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 the augmentation of the, of the X one. Uh, this is a normalized value. So obviously it affects right. it, but uh, the original algorithm is always the one with the higher memory footprint. So it's normalized value is one. Right, right, right. And uh, the, the size of the others are, it's just relative. Thanks. But if we just plot it, the actual number of nodes or memory use, it will affect the process. Uh, we see that here, when the fairness constraint is very strong, we are able to reduce the memory footprint uh, by a factor of 10 with the eager pruning and by a factor of 5 with the lead string. And as expected, as I said, uh, when we tighten the fairness requirement, we increase the effectiveness of the pruning. And finally, another interesting direction is the convergent uh, speed. So in this spot, you have the objective function quality on the X size and uh, the CPU time in a logarithmic scale on the Y axis. So again, the objective is to reach the dotted line as soon as, uh, as fast as possible, which means that you reach the, the, the best solution. And what we observe is that in the earlier stages of the exploration, the faster method is the original correct, the fair correct. This is what was expected. This is simply due to the fact that all uh, our three proposed methods have to perform calls to a solver. And when you do so, you lose time. So at the beginning of the exploration, you just lose time. And obviously, after some point, uh, it pays off. The scale is logarithmic. So actually, the, the phase where the original fair correct is the best only lasts like the first 10 seconds. And after some point, the original algorithm struggles because the remaining search space is used is huge, and the performed pruning pays off. What's interesting here is uh, we see the interest of the lazy pruning because it slows the exploration considerably less than the other ones at the beginning of the exploration. So if your objective is just to quickly have a good solution, it may be a good alternative. And again, we see that in these experiments, the so guiding guiding the exploration 
using the ILP objective function is highly beneficial here. It speeds uh, the convergence a lot, but highly counter beneficial here. Yeah. Have you tried to like use, for example, the lazy? A version at the beginning of the search tree, and then when you reach some point, then go to, for example, the ILP or EQ1, like to mix the several methods? Um, we, so, this, what you mentioned, I think, it's kind of equivalent to just waiting before performing the ego pruning. Because uh, in the first levels of the prefix tree, you have all this with one or two rules. So they don't capture a lot of examples. They, and so the domains of the integer variables in our ILP are rather large. And, and so most of the time, uh, the answer of the ILP will be true and the pruning will not work. So we tried, as you mentioned, as you suggested, different kind of hybrid approaches where uh, we only activate the pruning after some point because we don't want to slow the exploration at the beginning, but uh, only when the pruning will actually be satisfying. And we didn't get best results at this point. This is because there are two, like, two trends that go together. The, at, at the, on, on one side, uh, if you perform the pruning on the node that, that, that are uh, in the high level of the graph of the, the tree, the pruning may most of the time uh, not actually prune any, anything. But, when it does prune something, it prunes a huge part of the tree because we are higher in the tree. So yeah, we, we tried the hybrid approaches. Maybe we could still uh, get improvements by searching this direction. Okay, uh, so I just presented the integer in our programming based pruning approach which leverages jointly accuracy and fairness to prune the search space of the Fercorel's algorithm to prune its prefix tree. We showed that this approach leads to significant improvements for all evaluated dimensions. So we are able to reach better objective function values to prove their optimality and uh, to do so using less time and less memory. This approach uh, is very flexible due to its declarative nature. So you can easily plug in uh, different fairness constraints. You can also modify it for the case where you have more than two protected groups. Uh, future works include considering other machine learning algorithms or machine learning models and applying this high level of DIA of uh, leveraging the conflict between accuracy and fairness to enhance the exploration search space. Uh, future work also includes trying to guide the exploration. This is what we attempted with the ILP guided approach, but as we do so, it doesn't work all the time. And other future work uh, that may that is interesting would consist in solving the linear relaxation of the integer in our programming model. So this would, from a theoretical perspective, perform a weaker pruning, but uh, at the same time, solving an LP is faster than solving an ILP, and so the pruning will take less time. So this idea was suggested by Thibault and as well uh, by Peter Stucky at uh, the CPAI Europe conference. So thank you for the insightful uh, suggestion. The, the preliminary experiments that I made uh, for this idea shows that in practice, the performed pruning is the same or almost the same, uh, but it takes really less time. So basically you can have exactly the same graphs, but the gap between the original Farcorels and the pruning will, methods will be just bigger. Same trends, but better results. So as I mentioned, this work is presented at the CPAI Europe conference this year. Uh, in our paper, we also propose uh, a new data structure to cut uh, the different symmetries of the prefix tree while maintaining the guarantee of optimality. And we show that uh, if you use this new data structure and our ILP-based pruning together, you can still Reach and prove optimality uh, of the built models for larger data sets, like with tens of thousands of examples. The source code of our improved version of the algorithm is available online, and you can also install it easily using PyP. Uh, I, I'm in Montreal on June the 23rd of July, so if you have any question or suggestion, feel free to reach out. Here is a link to my homepage where you can find everything that I presented today, in, including today's slides and maybe link to the presentation as it was referred. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, 